And here at the Rainbow Six North American League, Doha Cookies, Jacob here with you. We just saw Oxygen take down the world champs, take down TSM, but we're not done yet. That's right. Time to get into our final match of the day. It's going to be Space Station Gaming versus Xset. And this one's going to be interesting because you could say Space Station Gaming strategically on a team level has gotten over the loss of Canadian. It's been long enough. They've been able to make the improvements. They've gotten it back together again. They may not have gotten over it on an emotional level, but they've gotten over it in maybe the way that matters most in game, right? Agreed. Then you've got Xset, who has an entirely new roster, a team organizationally, that was relegated at the end of last year. They're back again the, as our 10th team. We've got all new players here. So again, even though it's a new squad, you, you still have that sort of like shadow hanging over you of that org being relegated. So a little bit of pressure on these new players, despite the fact that they aren't responsible for what happened. But I want to get kind of your initial broad strokes input on this series. Like Cookie going into this one, what do you think we can expect? I think you can expect the unexpected, quite frankly. <laughs> I know the map already, <laughs> and to be honest, I don't know how I feel about it for a particular team. I'm not going to leak. No, I'm not going to be the first. Don't leak. Not going to be the first. Here's our six yeah. here. You got to pretend to be surprised. I haven't but seen it actually. I, I got to say, I think that when we get to it, it's going to be crazy. And yes, okay. um, yeah. uh, SSG. Caesar? I expect more of the same out of SSG, though. No, for sure. This is like the series I was most looking forward to, not just because it's arguably the team that, when they had a full proper five stack, was the greatest best of one team we've probably seen in the world in Space Station mm -hmm. because once they have Hot and Cold and then Skies, again, they only lost two best of ones over the course of two straight NAL stages. And then it's Xset, who could do anything or be like any level variance of good or bad. Zero idea what this team is going to do, but I still put them relatively high in my power ranking because all of them are individually skilled as all get out. And that Manifesting against a team like Space Station could prove to be troublesome to figure it's, out. It's going to be an explosive one. It's a good one to save for the end of the day for sure. Let's check yeah. out the map, though. Let's find out what the bands were. And then lastly, of course, what map are we actually going to see in this series? So X sets band tendencies is something we have no idea about. All we know are the maps that SSG themselves are good and bad on, unless they've got some scrim data to work off of here. So X sets bands in particular taking Villa off the board, arguably SSG's best map. They're 83% win rate and they don't ban it very often, so they wanted to not worry about it. They also want to ban the unknown that is Theme Park to ensure SSG don't use any of their previous experience on the map. In this case, SSG for their own part, Oregon, Chalet, Border off okay. the table. We're getting down to a point where, again, we could still potentially see uh, a new map played if Skyscraper gets all the way down here, and it is Cafe Band, another really good map historically, or I guess at this point, kind of an average map for Space Station because of how much internationally they play, and now Skyscraper no longer here. So we're down to just two. Bank itself is still on the table, and it looks like... When it comes up, bank itself is where we are going because Clubhouse right. got very deep in that rotation. A map that Xset know if they take SSG to could be a detriment simply because of how proficient SSG are on that map. It's kind of a comfort pick though because everyone in North America likes playing a Clubhouse or an Oregon. Right. We saw that in Challenger League over the past was... weekend. But uh, yeah, this is an interesting matchup to go to bank for sure. So Cookies, I know you had a lot to say about uh, bank. Go ahead. Well, I actually want to talk more about the Clubhouse versus bank. Oh, thing, well, never mind like... then. All right. Well, no, I, 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 it's, a, it's a good comparison. <laughs> yeah, no, because okay. it's like, yeah, I'll get to it. It's like, sure, we're talking about S we're talking about SSG, right? SSG is probably one of the few teams in the world, uh, maybe with like an Empire or something, that's like good at Clubhouse normally, like, and it's like decisively good at it, right? Most of the time, it's like I consider Clubhouse, especially since I come from the Le Challenger League, I consider Clubhouse like an equalizer map, right? Yeah. Or typically, if you're a team like Xset, that's clearly underdog. It's not even close. Let's let's not kid ourselves. You go to a map like Clubhouse, you go to the Oregons and whatnot. Obviously, SSG banned out Oregon oh. instantly, but you had that, you almost had that chance at Club, but they said, uh, no, we're going to a map like Bank, which I don't know. I feel like that. Probably favors. don't want to give Space Station a very decisive advantage in the first game that you play as a team. So, Bank seems like a very safe pick. It's not a map that Space Station themselves really go to. Like, they don't ban it very frequently, but they're still one and one on it since Stage 3. So. Fair enough. Let's talk about Space Station Gaming themselves for a little bit as we dive a little bit deeper into the roster. Now, Space Station Gaming, like we were saying, you know, a team that uh, likes to execute cleanly. And this group certainly does do that. Hot and Cold and Sky is joining uh, at different points in the year last year. They've had time to gel together. They've finished out that season. They had time to practice, obviously, in the off season. I think people are expecting a lot from this roster. 
Bosco's now the IGL, something that he did touch upon in said video, but that's a pretty pivotal thing to focus on because that was originally Sky's duty. That's something that he took from the back line if he's the one who's usually trying to do what a support IGL does on the reg. It's not just that they're also switching who the responsibility of leadership is, they're also swapping roles. So Skies and Bosco completely switching. Skies on the flank watch now means Bosco plays backline, might be where he's best utilized. That kind of experience in a leadership role, when Space Station for a while have been figuring out who's kind of best for the job in Canadian's absence, I think that's a pretty stellar pick and Skies should be able to flex a little bit more because when he played that back, I think in what the DZ day, he was a he was very very good in that spot right and it's i think there's potential we'll see the bosco smoke back that's the bosco bosco smoke yep that's what we want that's the type of bosco that is the era of bosco that is the version of bosco that we all know and love the most i think that's oh that's where i mean i feel like he made his resurgence like i don't know maybe you know it'll be like I'm not sure we all want to see the best Bosco we could possibly see. I don't know. I'm, I'm, just, I'm not trying to. This it's might like, be the formula for that. Oh, okay. I caught my tongue because I didn't want to like think maybe they're like questioning themselves. You can make like, absolute statements on the desk. It's okay. Don't over, only I'm Sith gonna... deal in absolutes, Jake. Agreed, and he is evil. Wow. This is like my brain telling me he has a better prediction record than me. Therefore, he's the enemy. <laughs> yeah. I'm, oh, I, I see I, where this comes I mean, from. Ah, okay. I kind of do, but it's like <laughs> Bosco's like this incredible smoke. That's what I remember in my brain, but it's been a while, right? So that's why yeah. I'm like kind of. It's the first day of the season. Like we're still just kind of getting used to seeing all these rosters, seeing the changes, seeing the uh, the effect that the off season has had on some of these squads like Space Station Gaming. Speaking of things that changed a bit in the off season, let's let's check oh out XL. Let's move to our other team here. And and there is no bigger change I think than being relegated, being out of the league. Then guess what? There's a tenth team. Welcome back to the league, XSet. Oh, you've gotten rid of all your players. All right, well, all new players come in. We'll see if this one uh, does a bit better. But they gained a lot of pretty significant names from uh, other teams around the uh, around the league, didn't they? Yep, a duo from OXG that was brought right in, both of which were rookies, right. and then proved themselves on the international stage several times, especially domestically, in both Kino and Yaga. Gomez and Diaz, names that may not be nearly as familiar because of their time spent in T2, but they're about to be household names on X set. And the superstar fragger right there in the center from Parabellum who catapulted them to more success from SI and from Challenger League. Spirits is finally here, but what kind of combination is this actually going to create? There's, I have no idea how they're going to fare for their You've first time. You've also got the interesting dynamic with Spirits, too, is that he was one of the players that sent Xset the org to the Shadow Zone to begin with. True. Then, you know, it, in uh, you know the, the enemies, the opponents unite in the offseason. He decides to join them as they come back in. So it's like, uh, I guess the thing, it's like they say if you can't beat them, join them. Now it's kind of the opposite. After you beat them, join them. Do it anyway, yes, right? Uh, yeah, it's kind of what happens. Yeah, I mean, also, it's like, it's almost like a reverse Kevin Durant, right? I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. how are you going to yeah. go to the team that you beat? Weird. But, yeah, I mean. As opposed to going to the team that beat you? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's just like, I, it, it's very strange. But, you know, X is serious about rebuilding Absolutely. their brand. Absolutely. And all that good stuff. So, I think Spirits is the guy to do it. I like Newers. Newers was number one in my upcoming list. Spirits number two. Spirits number two. Right behind him. Fair play. You're and I mean, like to see out of Spirits today. Again, we, we need to talk about this Xset roster in the context of the separation between organization and players, right? The separation between the squad and the, the company, right? Because Xset, the org, was relegated. This Xset group, this Xset set of players uh, does not have that baggage attached to them, right? They are, yep. by all accounts, a very talented group of individuals. Can they become that cohesive unit, though? is the question. I've gone through and done map calculations for every team from the past, like for, from stage three onwards. So it's about five to six months or so of uh -huh. map data, just to get a sense on what they might end up doing for this stage. I didn't factor anything from Xset for last year because it's quite literally useless garbage data. Yeah. The separation between Xset of the past and Xset of the present cannot be more defined than the fact that none of the players remain, none of the support staff remains. All of it is a complete do-over and start from scratch. And the big deal is that the Exit team from last time was that old rent-free core that came in and then didn't have two players that 
catapulted them to success off the rip and had to find replacements. This, complete do-over, complete start from scratch, tier one level coaching staff on the back end, and they are praying that this is a way better entrance into the NAL than what they tried last time. I think we got some fun stuff to look forward to with uh, X2 Spirits Boogaloo, but let's uh, send it over to our <laughs> casters and see what their predictions are going to be. That's right, it's predictions time once again. So, Blue, Stokes, this is a tough one, isn't it? Yeah, this is a very tough one, mainly because we kind of don't know, as you guys were talking about there, don't necessarily know what to expect out of Exit since it's a brand new roster, obviously going up against a core that's been around for a very long time, but has been a little bit back and forth. I don't really know which way to swing this one personally, but at the same time, I haven't been super convinced by the recent results I've been seeing from SSG, and I've been wrong nearly every single time today. <laughs> Literally every time. I wasn't going to bring it up. I wasn't going to bring it up. That's I mean, wrong, by the way, because I picked DZ for their game, so I know, that, I know that's not right. <laughs> but I'm going to throw a curveball this one. I think Xset's going to take it. Man. Okay. Why really? has he got a curveball on my curveball, man? Just I'm throwing going, it out. Nah, there. I'm going SSG now. Yeah, nope. that makes sense. Nope, nope. Can't do that. Just, Wait, just, you're saying you would have picked Xset if he didn't? Yep. But now, you know what? John just went and made me mad. So we're going <laughs> Space Station Gaming. Wow. All right. I mean, you know, you, you can't let your anger, you know, drive you to bad decision but making. I Are can, you sure? Doa, and I do <laughs> okay. all of the time. Maybe right. he's the Sith. <laughs> good to that know. makes more sense. He's the Sith. Oh, okay. Good to know. Good to know. All right. Well, Fury leads to anger. All that. We know how it ends up. So we've got our predictions from our casters. We'll get back to you to in a moment for now i'm curious about what my analysts have to say cookies how are you going to call this one i don't think this requires a uh, rocket surgery here rocket surgery it's very what is that that sounds very dangerous actually it's an insider oh oh okay all right i'm new here. but yes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's going to be space station actually how did you not get that come on rocket surgery what? space station oh yeah that kind of is oh, a, that was that kind of oh, okay. is a lapse right there isn't it yeah. it's some sort of it's term long, mannerism man. or whatever. I don't it's remember what it's called, day. but <laughs> Space Station Gaming, easy. I'll say SSG on the same level, but not quite as much as, oh, it's going to be easy. Xset strikes me as a team that will be able to wreak a lot of havoc in the NAL, but against a team that's this established, probably not quite yet. I love the promise. They've always been a team built on promise or potential, but again, that's kind of a curse word depending on who you talk to in sure, esports about sure. team longevity. Potential, promise, right. I'll give Xset the benefit of the doubt and say they'll perform well today, but SSG, even if it's a really scrappy game, which it might, just based upon who's playing for this Xset roster, SSG will still come out on top. Okay, so three for Space Station, one for Xset. Let's find out. What the coin has to say for one final time today. You know, if the coin says X set and X set win, I actually, yeah. I, I actually think that's kind of cool. All right. Well, we're going to go heads, X set, tails, Space Station Gaming. Well, I almost lost it there. I almost lost it. It was so close. And it is tails. So it will be Space Station Gaming. There you go. Is it, is it right side up? There we go. There right. it is. John, tails. the only contrarian here. Cool. Yeah, I guess so. And it will be right. Will it be wrong? Who knows? It doesn't think. It doesn't have a brain. It's a coin. Let's take a look at what our community poll will be for this fifth and final series of the day. It is going to be. What? Does anyone oh. speak Portuguese? Uh, I <laughs> dare you to try to pronounce that. Uh, you? you think I can? I'm I, not going to, but I can tell you what it says. Do I butcher it? And It says who is going to win country? this match, the Brazilians or the Gringos, no. apparently. Exit or Space Station. Who's it going to be? But the thing is, is like Exet, like it's, it's sure it's three Brazilian players, but it's also, you know, two non-Brazilian players as well. So obviously they got a lot of fans maybe from the Brazilian region. Brazil, a strong and long-standing esports history in that nation. But how much do they actually, I want to ask about that. How much do you think that really takes into account here? You know, do you feel like Exet to a certain extent is a little bit of a interloper from LATAM or do you see, or do you see them as like full NA now? They've come over to our region fully. It's, it's more of that. I would say interloper or outsider if this was made up of players from the Brazilian region, maybe yeah, exactly. from like lower tier teams that didn't do anything over the past year or so, mm -hmm. and then coming into the NAL expecting a different result in a different region. These guys have been based here for a long time. They might wave sure. the Brazilian flag, but with the exception of Budega, none of them have like tier one experience in Brazil. So this is, for all intents and purposes, still an NA team, just with a bit of a different color on the flag. Yeah, it's well, welcome to NA. Guys, we're happy you, you've been here for a while. We're happy you're here. It's the best region in the world, officially, as of uh, the recent... In and that. unofficially. So, there you go. Before. And unofficially, too. Whatever. Um, but, yeah, that's... So, yeah, poll closed already. No, I'm just kidding. You can go vote. <laughs> but you know what? It's time to get into a video that's going to tell us a little bit more about how this current form of Exit came to be. Let's check it out.
Hi, I'm Kino. My name is Spence. Hey, my name is Gilmas. I'm Diaz. Hi, I'm Yaga, and I play Flex for Exit. I play Flankwatch for Exit. And I play Hard Support for Exit. I'm the first entry for Exit. And I'm the entry player for Exit. I've been playing Siege since the beta. I was always used to being the rookie. Now I'm kind of the gold guard now. The transition from Oxygen to X set, uh, it, it's gone pretty smooth. Like all the guys on X set, I've, I've known those guys for probably four years now. Kind of a no-brainer, honestly. I know, the, I know the talent that the players on X set have. Uh, the path was kind of hard. Two years in CL, basically. Almost getting there, but then falling short. This year, we lost it to BB. After that, X set messaged me and uh, Gomez and picked us up. A month or so before SI, Gomez reached out to me and said Exet reached out to him and uh, they were planning on making a roster, either a full Brazilian roster or like with a Brazilian core, Gomez, Diaz and myself. I mean, I said I was interested at first, but like I was still in a really good roster with Oxygen and we had SI ahead of us. But uh, after SI with our performance, I realized that I don't think we would have like won anything. I think it's a solid roster who's always going to be like top four, top six. It's just a unmoldable team. I joined Exit, which is a really talented team and a lot of experience behind Bodega and Vivas. Competitively, Siege was my first game, but I've played like many other games. I started with Counter-Strike when I was like four or five. And then after that, it was like COD, FIFA, and like just other games, uh, GTA. When I moved back to America, my dad bought me a PS4 and he bought me Siege. So when it all started. So going from Parabellum to Exed was a shock. I went from a team that I've been playing with them for years, and I went from them to a team that we start from the scratch. At the beginning, we were just uh, we were focusing on team play, communication, just like the basics, you know. We don't have to focus so much on like chemistry playing together because we kind of already have chemistry just from having known each other so long and playing outside of competitive together. My whole career, our characteristic was that we never felt pressure for anything. We just play our game, we just trust in our game, and that's what I need, what I want to put on next set. No pressure, just have fun and play your game. We're probably gonna use a lot of the, the Brazilian play style. We have Bodega helping us with that. We have Divas as well. Uh, that's what we're trying to bring to the table. You know, a little bit of NA, a little bit of Latam, maybe a little bit of Europe, you know, just combine all play styles, make the best out of it. We have we have a couple of the, the harder teams first. Personally, that's like the way I'd want it to be. Not only can we kind of show what we're all about, like right out the gate, but we also, they have no prep for us, so they won't really know exactly what to expect from us. We're very hungry to win. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, once again to the North American League. It's day one of the action here for the 2022 season, but about to come to a close as we get ready to jump into our final matchup of the day. The dynamic duo from OXG have split off and have formed a whole new roster, ready to take on one of the most well-known rosters here in North America. It is that brand spanking new X-Set team getting ready to go up against SSG. Stokes, what do we make of this matchup here now? I mean, I'm just here for a good time, honestly, John. <laughs> I mean, like like they said, Exet said it themselves in the video. We don't have any prep on these guys. Yep. We have no idea what to expect out of them. I'm happy they're here. They seem very happy to be inside of pro play now, but I know they're hungry for that first win, and that is what today is about. They have to try and sneak a win past SSG with one of the most dominant regional players that we've seen in some time, the likes of Hot and Cold. Course. That is going to be the big challenge here, working themselves not only past him, but potentially the new leadership that's also going to be coming into the fold for SSG as well. You guys maybe caught the post on Reddit and in our content earlier today. It is Bosco now taking over the IGL responsibilities for the Space Station roster, where we previously were seeing Hot and Cold split that between a few of his other teammates here. So once again, new age coming into play here for Space Station Gaming, where they are looking to excel forward and claim a championship for themselves. Once again, will they be able to do it? Well, today will be the 
the start of a very long run up to that as they look, of course, to get themselves to the next major. Absolutely the case, my friend. As you said, a long road, but it all starts here and they want results. That's the biggest thing. You don't want to start off slow. You want to come out of the gate swinging and we'll see if Space Station can do exactly that. This roster is jam packed with talent, not only talent, but veteran talent. And that is hard to come by in Rainbow Six, especially in the droves that they've brought it with the SSG roster. I mean, the last time we made a roster change was for Skies. It's so impressive to see what SSG has been able to do time and time again throughout the years. Different strategy than some of the other teams in the league that we've been seeing, especially as we come into 2022, where quite a few teams are completely remixing pretty much the entire roster. Quite a few others here, like we've seen with SSG and a few more teams, only making those slight minor changes that are necessary, and obviously not even seeing that made in between the seasons. SSG has had this for about six to eight months now, so they've had plenty of time to bring that team cohesion together, bring that synergy to bear. And while we haven't necessarily seen it ring true just yet on international soil here domestically, it's always been a strong presence from the Space Station Gaming roster, even again with that slight little bump they had towards the beginning of 2021, when unfortunately Canadian had departed the team. They were able to get back on their feet very quickly as of Stage 2 and Stage 3, with the addition of Hot and Cold, as you were just talking about. Yeah, absolutely the case. The start to last year was one where they were practically blindsided by a last-second switch up in the roster and had to bring Luke in, of all people, to play. And that's no nothing against Luke at all, but the poor guy had to move from being an analyst that just punches numbers into a keyboard to being shot at by professional players inside of a competitive setting. That isn't fun, and that's exactly what Luke learned. Uh, it was not a great time for him, and it wasn't a great time for SSG overall, as I believe they finished seventh inside yeah. of stage one last year, but obviously looking to right their wrongs here in stage one of 2022. And now the big question coming into the fold is what kind of play style are we going to get out of the Xset roster here? Will we see something more akin to the North American teams as we come to expect here? Or given, of course, the history of these players and their own personal histories, will we drift a little bit closer into something more akin that we tend to get out of Latin? Well, you guys are not going to have to wait much longer to find out as we're going into bank for our final matchup of the day here. And a very interesting band to start things out from Xset as they're going to knock out Knock of all operators. Definitely an interesting one, but I'd say Nock, she's probably the most applicable to Bank out of all situations when it comes to maps, just because she's able to get so such easy access to Bank. Not only through possibly ATMs up front, but also just walking in through the parking garage. It's so easy uh, for an operator like that that has the capability to sneak past cameras and things along those lines. And speaking of sneaking, that's going to be uh, probably a highlight of Xset's roam game, as they will remove the Jackal from play. That's going to follow suit with Valkyrie, as actually she's been recently nerfed folks, if you didn't know, Valkyrie's cameras can no longer go outside because when you throw them out there, they only last about 10 seconds and then they simply lose signal. So not really any value coming from them if you do toss them outside any longer, but still with a map like Bank or something like Villa, it's still one of those operators that you'd really like to get rid of. You know where we got a lot of potential prop clutter, especially on the walls and ceilings there, especially for Bank's lobby, the ATM's area, there's a lot of kind of sneaky spots. Where the you chandeliers, can, yeah, you can the like grassy <laughs> knolls. You can I mean, like chuck the cameras out there and as long as you're not using them too much it's probably going to get away with it so once again still a safe pick here to ban her out in most situations specifically on these maps that's out of the way though let's get into our first round <laughs> folks as we're going to be going to staff and open area to start things out for both teams well pick phase through and hot and cold's on Attack blitz which will more than likely not happen this will this will be our first like pretty big bait when it comes to the attacker repick i'm assuming but if hot and sticks it i mean ah. hey we'll, we'll we'll have to see but either way they're going to be getting droning things out here x set they're going to be headed downstairs they instead will head for the mid floor and go to staff and open area i am going to be kind of curious now we'll see when the team gets a bit closer to the site hot and cold i think just now finding out that they're deployed over here towards open area but no switch yet and i do think that this might actually end up being a pretty serious pick from hot and cold never mind there we go that's going to shift it away because they do need some capability to knock out the utility that's going to be deployed not only on this site but in the extended positions upstairs in towards stocks as well so he'll move away from that over on to a flores instead and additionally we'll see skies also change his operator from the Maverick now over towards the Zero instead here to be able to add those Argus cams into play and give a little bit of extra intel over to the attacking roster. Yeah, so many change up for uh, Space Station came in inside of that one as Hotton also drops that blitz, brings in the Flores yep. instead. 
dead. So uh, we'll see if he can get any traction with those Rotero drones. It's going to be an extended hold here for Exet, as to be expected on this exact site here for Bank. You really want to hold on to this top floor for as long as humanly possible and then just drop back down, delay that time from SSG and try and pick up a few bodies in the process. It's going to be three separate Exet members towards the top floor. Spirits here will be inside of the front desk space with a long angle towards top square, bearing down on the square door. SSG, they're stuck to the drones for the time. Just try and see how this setup is currently working itself. Paul's waiting for his opportunity to go for the swing, but not going to find any aggression coming out from the Exet defense just yet here. So he'll hold back, wait for the drone clearance to come out, and they'll be finding that. Diaz just a little bit off of being able to catch that one, and we are going to see a good out. It is still going to implode in a few seconds. So we'll have to back away from that one and give up his position inside of Jay overall. The back downstairs onto the first floor in order to still be able to fight later on oh. around it. Oh, that's a great lead up from Spirits there. Gets the drone. Knew there was going to be a swing shortly afterwards. Catches this rappel on the window, too. Not able to immediately catch the head of that player, but as he goes back, I think he does clip a small bullet or two off on the Bosco there. He's holding on the other end of this fight right now. Either way, SSG struggling to clear out specifically Spirits, and at the moment, he'll be wasting a lot of time to continue maintaining oh! this. What a transition! Wasn't even going for him, but he knocks out Hotton. Finally takes a huge amount of damage, though, and that will force him out of hiding, where folks can finally pick up the exchange. An insane roam from Xset as Spirits is able to get two, and the rest of Xset, they're able to just fall off of the top floor. They'll abuse these hatches, especially Yaga, as they'll move down to E2 and simply sit inside of that elevator. If he can occupy this space for an extended period of time, he could get even more frags for the Exet roster as they more than likely don't know that he's here. Y'all can continue to patiently wait on the inside of the elevator banks here. A minute remaining here now for SSG to make their play out. Fultz uh, just spam it <laughs> in here and ends up catching a target. Gomez tries to transition off of that spam, but instead gets caught in the middle of the movement here. Fultz will quickly take care of the Banshee, of course, now that he has free reign over Tellers and has the cutoff for the main stairs rotate, which could lead to some problems here for Yaga's state of play. He just had a lucky star watching over him, though, as he quickly takes out that drone. I believe he still thinks he would have been revealed, however. So with him shooting it out, He's going to drop back down in the basement and look for a rotate, but that could potentially end up being a double-edged sword, as remember the overwatch they had on the stairs just a few moments ago. No guarantee they'll still be on that angle, however, as they need to make the transition here into open area, still with just 15 seconds to go. Kino able to play the smoke here, and with 10 seconds remaining, Bosco will begin the plan. Diaz with one, Kino with the other, and Yaga with the flank. He'll be able to take down Bosco, and what a beautiful round from Exet. This is exactly what they were talking about in that video, as SSG aren't going to have any bearing as to how they're going to play this match. So they have to commit a lot to their info game, John, and figure out what exactly this setup is. There's really nothing they can go off of just by knowing the site and being like, okay, well, we know they kind of set up like this around the map. So they're constantly having to deal with these Exet members specifically Yaga, time and time again inside of that one. He transitions from the top floor to the middle to the bottom and eventually gets that last kill to seal the deal for Exet and give them their very first round. The fact that SSG aren't really going to have any tape on Exet is really the one factor of this too because keep in mind the players we have, the caliber of players that have been brought onto this new roster, you can expect very aggressive play and very dynamic aggression on top of that play as well, meaning that SSG are going to have a tough time trying to predict exactly when the members of the Exet roster are going to go for swings, are going to go for picks. They don't necessarily have a great track record to play off of. Again, going back to the point where they haven't played against them yet. So they don't necessarily know what to expect from the full core of this team. And that makes it very hard, especially starting on the attacking side, to make any kind of aggressive move as they could just as quickly be thwarted by a quick flank being set up by the members of Xset. Yes, indeed. It's going to be ha it's going to have to be something that SSG is worried about throughout the remainder of this offensive side. Is Axet a single lacking member when it comes to gun power inside of this lineup any longer? So, more than likely, be able to consistently take it to SSG in that capacity. They're going to continue this roam game here. As Spirits will now align himself with the top elevator space and hold on to that with Vigil for a time. Things will continue to look good here for Exet as they waste out that first 30 seconds of the round. Not going to see any challenges against them just yet. However, SSG will be able to walk right in to the inside of security for themselves, or servers rather. But this is somewhat by design. You'll notice these soft panels that have been left unreinforced here to the inside. And that's because, to some extent, Exit will want to play into that. They will want to the ability to fire across here as well as 
de-reinforce the positions here for the attackers as they'll try to utilize this, and any reinforcements would really only serve to help them in the long run, which is why Osa is going to end up being such a great pick here for SSG, as they can now re-reinforce those positions with the shields and make their post plant a lot stronger. Yeah, we saw this from our bank earlier on today, is it's one of those routine ones that we've begun to see for some of the harder to plant places. Osa is just fantastic for that, as you have two of those OSHA, OSA shields that you can possibly use to not only set up for the plant, but also as overwatch when it comes to the post plant, making things quite difficult uh, for a lot of the defensive members. See how it goes down now is still a minute and a half remaining, so not too, too much for SSG to really do with the remaining uh, you know, amount of time that they have. They can really just burn out a lot of this utility, but Axet, they're starting to collect the kills, and Gomez, he gets two, not only from the Goggles of Warden, but also from the Nitro Cell. Yaga adds to the heap as well as SSG, they're feeling this fire. SSG, no capability to contest against the backside players. Either they have no pressure on elevator or anywhere on the backside of the basement hold now as well. And that's going to cause some serious problems. They don't even have the player power to be able to negate this here. Yeah, we see one pickup from Foltz, but it's immediately countered out with Dios taking down Rampy. And aside from that, Foltz is now the only one left standing here inside of a 1v4. Doesn't even have case control as that ended up going down on the hop in from the window outside. Foltz can't even now leave the small office that he's inside of because there is a toxic bay blocking his path forward. This is nearly unwinnable for Fultz, and he's going to try his best in order to make it out of this tough situation, but more than likely, we are looking at a solid second round on the board for next set. Fultz taking his time with this 1vx situation. He'll drop down the, ca uh, the hatch into the waiting arms of Kino. We'll end up catching him. Either way, though, for SSG, probably just taking some extended time to figure out exactly what they want to do with this offensive half. It is not working out well for them at the moment. In fact, it's Xset who have simply time and time again been ahead inside of the overall strategy. We see it here on this defensive end with the Warden play coming through. A huge, huge boon for them inside of that situation where the smokes usually end up blocking off a lot of the sight lines and making it a very difficult gunfight for that Red Hall player. He can just see clean through it as well as dedicate his Nitro side of the situation to find an easy 2K and just make the rest of the round so palatable for Exet. And once again, SSG struggling in these departments despite the fact that they still have have the benefit of attacker repick here. Already seeing one slight adjustment for this round, by the way, as Skies move from a Maverick over onto a Habana. Just a stylistic change more than anything there. But away from that, you can tell once again, SSG using their drones, getting all this intel in the early round. They know exactly what the setup looks like, even having the ability now to change their operators to better suit the clear. Still not even able to set up the most basic of clears against x as they haven't even gotten close to the site just yet. And we are going to see one additional switch come in there for Hotton as well, as they'll bring the Thatcher into the fold. Have they finally done it, John? Have they finally balanced the game to where we get to see Thatcher more often than not inside <laughs> of a stage? It's been looking I, good today. It's been looking real good. We've actually seen the guy play. He's not just locked in prison. You know, I, I feel like there for a while that he was just practically in solitary. Like, there was nothing really he could do to get out either. They took away his destruction of utility on the defensive end, made it toward only the disabled. That didn't really do too much to the overarching story of his bands. It was just such a long road, but maybe we're finally here this year. We'll have to see, just because of this attacker repick, maybe some people want to take away some other pieces to the overall puzzle. But for SSG, going to be starting things off in a pretty traditional sense when it comes to bank. We're right outside of the square balcony with drones working its way in towards stock. I'm sure that you guys have done this yourself time and time again. It's taking off a big chunk of the defensive pressure here, though, by holding not only the square push from down the hallway, but also this eventual play into stocks, of course, where you can see Rampy Skies, or at least one other member of SSG, trying to deal with the utility support thrown in here. A double pellet of the x Kairos here to open up a POV against Spirits, hopefully. Should be able to pull off the job, and they're going to do one more as well. You can already see the cross doing its work as Spirits tries to peek out for a moment, but quickly corrects his mistake as he has to go back to the top of main stairs, now having to be a little bit cautious of potential skylight pressure as well, but the good news is that's fairly rare to see, especially from SSG with their current positions. I say that, but got a couple of players roaming around here, so still could get tripped up by that, but it doesn't look like it's going to eventually end up happening as SSG are more focused on getting themselves into the site here, given that half the round has already been wasted away. Yes, indeed. Exit sitting on their hands as of right now. Not really much to do. Gomez getting a little active inside of Janitor, but he doesn't want to swing this door either. He just want to let's, uh, wants to let SSG make the mistake and want to see if that actually comes to fruition. As this timer continues to dwindle, SSG, they just seem very, very patient with their current motives. Also get 
things going here on the north side. Finally, we'll have a breach. It'll come in from the east, still occupying that square space as Skies will finally start us off here for round three as Spirits will go down at about 51 seconds. Spirits finally being eliminated, but this is the player they expected to go down earlier on. Remember, he had that aggressive position, but Skies continues to excel. Now finding Kino as well. Finally, SSG getting their feet on the ground with these entries and looking to carry it forward. Yaga and Gomez both nearly getting caught. Gomez will be finished off, and Yaga still stays incredibly low. So suddenly, this round has been turned on its heels, and SSG has full control as they swing into pretty much everywhere but Janitor, where the last two members of Xset are looking to make their own final stand here. Not going to be very secure positions either, as additional pressure is coming up from the curved hallway. The nade rolls in. Yaga does stop the initial plan attempt. Rampy trades it back out onto him, however, and that just leaves DS alive here. But with only 10 seconds to waste, if he can stop this plan, he might very well clutch out the round, but no, it won't happen. Fultz instead gets the final kill, and finally, SSG are on the board. Very well done from SSG. I, I mean, that round felt like it was just so very grueling, but you had to feel for Axet inside of that one because SSG, they weren't giving them any rope at all. I mean, if anything, it was more damning to themselves as they continue to try and move around the site and find these different avenues of attack towards the offensive side, but it just starts giving kills over to SSG because Axet gets so restless, and that's exactly what SSG were looking to abuse inside of that. And now SSG have found their mark inside of round three. Will we see the same strategy here for round four? Certainly going to have to wait and find out now as X sets kind of sit back and wait strategy has finally failed them for the first time in this game. Of them has worked out fairly well for the previous two rounds, but now we need to start seeing them get a little bit more active, a little bit more aggressive with the ways that they try to fend off SSG and keep them out of these zones of control to try and waste out the majority of the three-minute timer, which is going to be starting in a few seconds here. Once again, a large number of changes coming in for the SSG lineup as well. We're going to see two of their hard breachers switch. One will go off hard breach entirely, and another will just switch to a different one as Bosco instead brings the ace into the fold. This guy's going to add those truck fingers here into the play as well. And Rampy, once again, will also bring the Finca into, the, into play. Wouldn't you know, Lycan to be the person coaching the team that has the most active attacker repick. <laughs> so very strange. I would have never have guessed that ever. Uh, no, for SSG, this has been honestly fantastic uh, so far, seeing them uh, trying to abuse this as much as humanly possible on this offensive side, especially for this round. As you said, three change-ups for Bosco Skies and Rampy. And not only that, but we're also starting to see some unique operators as well, John. This is the second time that we've seen Ash today as well as we have Gridlock back in the mix. I like how your first go-to point about a unique operator was Ash. Uh, well, I mean, we barely see her <laughs> yeah, anymore. Yeah, fair and enough. also, like, I'm the biggest Ash crutch of all time, so... Here comes the play, though, as we are going to see SSG force the issue towards the inside of open area. It'll work out quite well. That is, of course, until we see the Toxic oh. Babe go in. But Bosco, at the risk of his own life, and now two trades against them, is going to stick it. It'll get the Diffuser down on the ground. But what kind of post plan is SSG going to have with two players immediately getting knocked out? And a third now being found from Gomez. Skies, great read. He's able to counter out the rotate from Spirits back up, but he's got a lot more work than this to do. Kino swings out with some assistance from his other teammate there. They're able to shut down the first. Skies stopped. Oh. He's actually got a very winnable post plant position here, but he's at such low HP. He's got to do this so passively. No one from X set jumping on the counter just yet, and finally he's going to be caught here as Diaz supports the counter, and that's going to allow for X set to negotiate a third round. It was going to be a pretty close one there, but I'll be honest, it just feels like SSG did not play out that post plant correctly. A little bit of an oversight there from the Ash. I'm really surprised that Skies just didn't have him hold his cross there for the bottom of square and just play for the case control instead. But, I mean, we have Ash with an overswing and death. That, that's really it at the end of the day. So many kills going towards x squad that it was almost impossible for SSG at the end of the day unless they played it out perfectly inside of that situation which obviously did not happen. So for X set, things continue to excel and things continue to rotate, obviously, as they're constantly locking down these sites on the defensive side. Back into the basement where they're going to look to control things one more time before they close out this half with one additional round after this, of course, still to come. Meanwhile, for SSG, things are remaining the same as we're going to see a Twitch come in now for Hot and Cold here, where they're likely to get some better intel, as well as potentially delete some of that pesky utility on the inside of security and CCTV. To be You're done. lying to yourself. Yeah, Just yeah. say it right now. It's the gun. Well, yeah, that's part of it, too. <laughs> 
trying to... Well, we're not even actually going to see that, as it'll get re-picked anyway. Hot and cold, realizing that there's not going to be a lot of use for either the F2 or the utility that comes with her. Instead, a lion is brought back out. Keep in mind, of course, once again... Actually, no, never mind. We don't have Nomad Band. That was our previous map, so we're going to see it once again. Just a lion brought in for the Ancy Room. I don't think we had Nomad Band in the last map either, because that was the Oxygen game. I feel game. like I remember one game. I'm like... like like phantom remembering like a nomad band or something. Man. But either way, let's it was carry a dream on. last night. You poor man, you've been yeah, actually yeah, casting yeah. for 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, now for SSG, they're going to be switching things off of the Twitch over to the Lion, which is a great pick, mostly because I don't think Twitch's utility would get a lot of traction in this situation. But you yeah. can kind of say the same thing about Lion because Spiris is on Vigil, so he can just sneak right around these EE one Ds. It's not even only that either, but it's like the the roams we've been seeing from X that haven't been like super active oh, roams like fantastic. this. That's going to be a nice catch, though. Multiple players getting involved in that, as you see Rampy trying to assist with that as well. Nicely done, as he's going to be able to get the final blow on that one with some assistance on the repel. First member of X set down, no response to be seen against SSG just yet. Yogg, of course, <laughs> definitely seeing that drone rip its way past him, but not immediately responding to it. I think he was expecting an immediate reswing. Doesn't end up happening, so he'll move a few seconds later here and retreat down to the basement as they can't risk the loss of another player here, potentially leaving the remaining ones at a 3v5. Well, slow and steady wins the race now for SSG as they've gotten the man advantage but are looking to deal more damage to the X set roster as well. Gomez will be holding down the teller's door and full to deliver the killing blow to him. Now a 5-3 advantage in favor of SSG. They've gotten a decent amount of control on this mid floor here as well, so it's gotten even more difficult for X set to try and stem this offense away from the actual site as all of these hatches begin to open and SSG have plenty of time to get more more insight in the actual site setup. SSG certainly making great work off of the momentum when they are able to actually control things inside of the earlier round. Here in this round is becoming another excellent example of that. But so far, aside from this round, we've only seen one other round like it. So once again, not necessarily an immediate path to success being found here from SSG. And a 3v5 with all players down in the basement. As long as they can waste enough of the remaining time bank, this is certainly winnable for the X set roster here. It's looking like the majority of SSG, not too much surprise here, is going to push their way in from the server side. I am curious to see if they're going to try to put any additional presence on the back end of this one. But away from that, they don't necessarily need to focus too much on that because they have the numbers so low oh. already. And it's just a process right now for SSG. They're just checking off the list one by one. Tiaz quickly being overwhelmed inside of his Red Hall hold as well. He knows he doesn't really have much capability to fight here. Tries to counter out the Diffuse plant, but it's not going to end up working out. He goes down, and it's a flawless round for the <laughs> SSG roster. <laughs> Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Just Rampy. Rampy might be one of the funniest humans ever. I'm just saying, because because he goes he goes for the fist bump, and then right after he gets the fist bump, he's like high five. Like, <laughs> like what? What are you doing, man? Uh, but SSG with a flawless round, and that's right there. That is what we expect yeah. out of Space Station Gaming. I think the big thing right now is that. Again, no one has any tape on x -Set, so it's one of these things where they're walking into an alien situation. You have no idea what's going on in the you know, opposing squad. You're just simply going into the woods and trying to figure it out along the way. And honestly, I'll say uh, Space Station has done a pretty bang-up job of it thus far, especially with the you know the looks that x -Set have given to Space Station. These are not simplistic setups. This is a lot of extended yep. holds. This is a lot of cutoffs that SSG have to establish. And not only that, but a lot of synergy and team playing necessary in order to clear out a lot of these areas. So the problem that Xset now needs to be kind of aware of here, since we have started to see some consistency, consistency excuse me, come out of the board for SSG, is, is Xset slowly kind of losing that mystery about themselves? Is SSG getting a better idea about what the general round around setup is going to look like? And does that mean that Xset really has to rely more on the core strategies rather than just wild aggression, the kind of unknown element, in order to get them over the edge and win these rounds? That's going to become a problem for them as they get deeper and deeper into the stage and they'll lose that advantage they were talking about before where okay no one has tape on us that's going to change very very quickly of course yeah the big thing is you have to keep the strategical ball rolling you need to be changing things up and not let these teams get a bead on you especially for a team like exit when you're so fresh and brand new and everyone is sitting here right now i can almost guarantee you analyst wise and taking notes on this squad for future endeavors exit wow. with a massive opening they'll take down rampy and fultz
Spirits as well acting basically as just the distraction there to allow another teammate to lurk up through the top of the square steps and be the one to knock out one of the two players there and certainly distracted so that we can see Spirits make his push to confirm a second. Now, of course, trade is found. Spirits is going to be caught trying to move away from the second floor hold and transitioning himself back into the basement, but still an advantage to exit here as they hold a 4v3. And not only that, but Yaga still has some presence back on the first floor as he's waiting back inside of one of the elevators who does, should rather, have a safe path of retreat through the hatch nearby. Yeah, Exet are not there worried about this in the slightest. An easy drop here for Yogg. And for SSG, all of the hatches are mostly open. They just need to make sure that this area is clear. And well, Diaz currently occupying open area could be a problem. As what? Oh! <laughs> Hotton, that was not the play. Diaz reads him like a book. Oh, that was a bedtime story if I've ever seen one. And Exet, they pull ahead yet again here. It's four to two and possibly a 4-2 to two score line ahead of us as well. Bosco and Skies stunned suddenly as they lose their Lion here. One final EE1D went out just as we saw him get his head chopped off oh, there. Honestly, so man. unfortunate for the SSG roster, as now Xset has two players here for every one that SSG has. They haven't even made the transition into the basement yet, so Xset still has free reign over the entirety of the bottom floor, although of course they have kind of given up control over server. That's a bit of an unnecessary risk to move their players inside of that. SSG now scrambling to try and make that transition themselves, work their way into the site. Skies is hoping to find something on a top-down angle here, but it does not look like much is going to be visible to him based on the silhouettes from downstairs here. 40 seconds left, so a fairly decent amount of time given the circumstances, but they need to try and bait out this utility. Two Nitro still available here for both Gomez and Diaz. That's a lot they have to try and bait out with only 30 seconds left, and that's not counting for any actual swings or maybe upstairs rotates we can see these players go for. And another factor here too. The toxic babes continuing to flood in. Bosco has to force his way past that. This is a good start though. They've evened it back out or come very close to doing so with Skies' pick. Now it's been evened out with Bosco confirming onto Gomez. Ten seconds left. Skies gets number three. What's this comeback right now from SSG? Oh! Diaz no, tries to hop up but it won't work. SSG comes back inside of the 2v4 scenario and clutches it out for themselves. That was incredible from Space Station Gaming. What a round from them. Hot and cold, taken out in such a dynamic fashion. And then Boss Goat in Skies slap Exet off of the site. Diaz trying to make the play at the last moment, but Bosco clutch in the situation. Not only for that, but the fake earlier that baits the Warden into an improper angle and secures that kill as well. Insane two versus four for the SSG squad. Beautiful play from SSG, and it's certainly even things up now as we are in a dead heat going into the second half. Both teams with three rounds. SSG now jumping on to the defensive side. We've we'll got our first true test of Xset's team making capabilities. There's going to be a lot to clear out, just as much as Xset was throwing as SSG in the previous half. So let's see if they can handle this now on their own attacking side. And more importantly, if we'll get any repicks. We are going to see a Nomad brought in here as they'll change Gomez for the Yana over towards that. Finca will be removed, and instead, a Sledge will be brought in, and finally, one of the two hard breachers is going to be knocked out as Diaz will swap over towards an Osa for additional utility. It shouldn't be too big of a deal here for Exit. This is the beauty of that attacker repick once again. So they've recognized that SSG are going for more of a roam strat, so they know that a lot of these hatchels more than likely will be open. So we'll have to see exactly what could possibly be the avenue that Hot and Cold gets back. I saw that the open area hatch was reinforced. Janitors also reinforced, so they might have small office open or something like that. Yeah, it's going to be the small office space with Fultz playing inside of archives and a rotate. Now for Exit, they will begin their very first clear of bank Happy to deal with hot and cold on this top floor. Hot and cold waiting it out patiently here now for Exit to try and attempt the clear. Early days inside of this round, so it will be quite a few seconds before we see Exit encroach upon the territory of SSG. But it will happen sooner rather than later here. As once again, SSG bringing a very, very similar font to the table that we saw from Exit back inside of the first half of this very same site hold. Rampy holding the exterior hallways, the janitor rotate, as well as the potential stocks hop in. And then deeper towards the inside, closer to Banana, that's where you've got Hot and Cold looking to fend off the repels and any additional 
additional aggression that might come from the front lobby here. It's a two-tiered system, and as you can see, it's very, very powerful if Intel is being supplied properly to those two players. Gomez nearly getting his head cut off as he tries to rotate into it, but both Rampy and Hull oh. are going to end up attempting to give up those positions. But as you just saw, Kino, a good rotation from him, catches the rotate from Houghton down through the skylight and knocks him out. You don't have to worry about those angles as much anymore on bank, but you still have to worry about the one side of the stairwell. That was the big changeup was what they did to the skylights and the angles that they took away. But that main staircase still has some high traffic for the offense to look into, and that's how hot and cold falters. But luckily enough, they've already wasted quite a bit of time. Minute and 15 seconds remain for Exa to actually traverse down to the basement and get a plant down. Yaga now working on the verticality as he will begin opening up a lot of different avenues on this top floor to see into the remainder of SSG's setup on this second level. Just a minute to go here for X. Oh, and Rampy. Yes, they found the opener, but yeah, indeed, Rampy. How are you still up here? How did he get he here? So much control. There's no way that X is oh, aware oh. of this as well. First one's for free. Oh, Second oh one. my God! Yaga spins it on its head and knocks out Rampy. Saves the day for X. -Set. A big distraction for a moment, but they've got to focus up here. Still, the time is low. They haven't moved into the basement just yet. And now they've got to be wary of anyone else that might have snuck up the remain stairs here, but they're finding an opportunity at the same time, though they haven't fully cleared out the first floor. You're going to see Bosco trying to move in and stop this plan attempt from Diaz, but no, he gets sent off, and we're going to see as these players try to move forward. Now the air drops preventing the immediate oh, rotate. What? That's a big mistake, though, from Exit. Kino accidentally knocking out Diaz. Evens our numbers back up again into a 3v3, and Bosco still causing havoc from upstairs on the first floor. He could potentially cause some major issues now. Spirit's nearly getting caught, but as well, another member of the Exit, or rather SSG roster, goes down trying to push themselves out into server here. Skies now going to go for the first counter defuse attempt. It's a very weak position, but he does have some hard play to lock him into this spot. We'll have to get off it for a moment as Yaga seems to have found some shots on him. Someone needs to swing it here, though, and we're going to see Kino attempt no! to stop him, but he can't lock in the shots. It's another clutch from SSG, and they're just laughing their way to the bank about it. They're already there, John. They don't need to go anywhere. Just cash out. You're at the bank. You're at the bank. I'm just messing with you. Anyways, <laughs> what an insane <laughs> round from SSG. I mean, the balls on this man oh, to man. stick Kino that so plant. Close. So unbelievably close. He's literally inches away from this man's Pixels. noggin through the wall, and he can't find it. That's just G. They pull ahead for the very first time here on bank. If he moves that spray or that tab just a couple pixels to, the, to right. the right, and he would have had it. An easy headshot to lock down the round. Tried to go for the full rotate instead of re-attempting or just trying to side spray. So unfortunate for the exit roster as another round that seemingly was in their hands escapes them over to SSG's side instead. So somewhat predictably here and very much understandably, we are going to see Exet take a timeout as they need a breather after two very disappointing rounds. Yeah, well, when you ice your teammate and then lose a post plant that you really weren't supposed to lose, that might be the perfect time to take a tactical timeout. So very well done from Exet here. Probably some, you know, very harsh words to say to each other, <laughs> I would assume, inside of that one, but probably not too much. And more just, yeah, you know, let's reset. That was just not really our round. So let's just see what we can do going forward. But, I mean, hats off to SSG because they brought that one back from the depths. Absolutely the case. They're allowed to do so in quite a few respects as well. Remember the big rotate back up to the second floor there. I believe it was Rampy that pulled off that heroic feat there, knocking out two members of X that they had zero idea that play had been happening. And on top of that as well, there was another member of the team still rotating around the first floor throughout the rest of the round, continuing to cause havoc there. A little sloppy in terms of the flank watch from X set, but a very easy thing to correct and fix. Hopefully, we'll not be making that mistake again here on future clears as that is going to Definitely cause problems for them if it should be the case. Away from that, though, SSG now takes the lead at 4-3 to three as they get ready to go for another defense here on the inside of open area to truly lock in the lead at what could become a 5-3 scoreline. This one's going to be pretty interesting. We have two panels currently missing from uh, the kitchen space here, and they're never coming because what is that? Oh, man. This is this is some SI strategy. I believe we saw, I if I'm remembering this correctly, I believe that we saw Geo playing a very similar position inside of Janitor at SI for TSM. Uh, and this is honestly a fantastic place to be because you're really just annoying to everyone trying to occupy the top floor. They have to deal with all those reinforced walls. You have a hatch to leave. You can sit there with just all the utility in the world and be like, all right, how many things would you like to toss at me? 
Just a big jack-in-the-box, basically. Yes, here. really. You, you never really know when he's going to pop out and try to shoot at you here. Rampy, at the same time, looks like he wants to try and maintain an upstairs position, but is very quickly forced away. Two additional drones come in his direction. Can't really stick around and try to support Fultz for too much longer for as little support that Fultz actually needs from this position here. As you were talking about, he's got reinforcements. He's got electrocuted walls. I think the wall behind him is electrocuted, All three too. ADSs as well. <laughs> yep, all three ADSs supporting him. The deployable shield, obviously. What more can he really ask for, aside from... <laughs> another teammate to help him out. I mean, I don't really know, John, especially <laughs> as a player like Fultz. I, I don't really know what the answer is past that. I, I mean, I guess a million dollars or something, but I mean, they were pretty close to that when they ended up picking up that hammer in 2020. Uh, but now for SSG looking to extend this lead, they've already dealt some pretty serious damage to Spirits, and it's going to continue as it takes yet another chunk out of his HP bar. Xset will continue to clear down towards the mid-level, and they actually have quite a few bodies to worry about specifically Rampy as of right now as he's poised to swing into E2 and deal with Gomez who was just around the area moments ago. Instead, he's traversed back upstairs. He's currently looking for anything going on around the stock space. This guy's not going to get the ping from the heartbeat sensor against Yaga, but he will see the skeleton key shots ring out and very quickly have to pocket that sensor to get the heck away from those openings there. A little bit too dangerous for him to stick around here. Fultz, of course, still being a factor upstairs in his own position. Going to try to waste out some of the time. Begin deploying some of the toxic babes. Exit don't really seem to mind his position too much right now, though. They're just kind of awkwardly sidestepping around it until they're forced to deal with it, which honestly might be one of the correct ways to try and approach this, because aside from the rotate downstairs, he doesn't really have anywhere to go, as well as his swing from out of the actual janitor hallway here. It can only really be annoyance more than anything and a slight delay to the overall execute. Well, with 30 seconds remaining, X set have got to hightail it into sight, and it all starts with Kino. He'll take down Hot and Cold, but a great read here from Skies as well for the bottom of Square. They'll know that Kino's around the space as well as Gomez. It's up to Bosco to try and shut this down as stuns start to come in from Copier as well. All hands on deck for S uh, SSG, rather, and they'll be able to start off strong with three big kills. Four versus two now, make it a four versus one, and a three versus one as Diaz will pick up his own, but he has to get that case first. With five seconds remaining, he's got a lot of fights to take in order to do it. Skies will take him out with a pistol from Blue, and SSG will get yet another defensive round. Xset flatlining on that round there. Nearly a flawless one coming in from SSG as unfortunately the attacking strategy bears no fruit from Xset. And they just try to brute force their way into the site there. Got that one opening kill before they started the execute, but as they tried to work their way in, that upstairs position collapses upon them and away from that. The utility from the defensive side has no problem clearing out that straightforward attack that Xset was forced to go for as they had no additional time or even really a strategy to build up towards anything Defenders else there. It's a simplistic push pushed mainly from square side, and it is countered out by the strong positions from SSG. So they're going to shift themselves upstairs before potentially rotating back down into the basement hold again on what would be round number 10. It's pretty strong showings here, especially from the X, well, not Xset members, but from the XOXG members. Kino and Yaga both showing up in massive dividends. Seven and six for Yog and seven and four for Kino. Very impressive stuff for this new roster, but specifically these two members. Spirit's not as hot to trot, and neither is Gomez, but they've been able to strike true a couple of times at a minimum, and obviously their assistance has gotten them to this point. The big thing is now, though, is they really need to get this offense going. A couple switches that you saw there. The most notable one is going to be Diaz bringing the Ying into play here for the attacking side, looking to stun out the resistance from SSG instead of brute forcing it through a normal attacker setup here. Plenty of soft breaks still being brought between Kino and Yaga. Even Spirits adding a little bit to that degree. It's actually missing quite a bit of hard breach here. No can openers even being brought to the table. So it is going to be a potential problem for our attackers if they're looking to use square. I would assume that's not going to be the case considering the operator lineup they have. Have, but let's pay closer attention to that now as X set start to creep a bit closer to the building. They're going to have to do something with Diaz here because past that they have no other means to really enact anything upon yeah. SSG. I mean, they have some frag grenades, uh, they have some stuns for burn, and they have concussions, uh, concussions from spirits. So you're looking to X set to try and hit one of these sections of this top floor, but they need to hit it hard because if they lose that engagement, I don't really know how much farther they're going to get inside of this round. And well, in fact, Sean, I think this one's going to pop off pretty hard. Because <laughs> 
because I'm getting a sense for PS. Uh, I don't know, but it seems as though people are going to start swinging things, and Yaga starts us off. He'll take down Fultz. They've already taken control of stock as well as Diaz is looking to try and clamber his way into the main stairs. Spirits will be able to hold on to E3 for a time as Bosco is trying to man the conference door. Still plenty of time for Exet to get things done, but they found their mark early here. Yeah, full outer hall control already gained for Exit, but there is some problems they have to deal with. A potential rotate up main stairs from Hotten, a swing out through janitor door from Skies. Bosco could also get aggressive from the double door outside of meeting room as well. So there's a lot of factors here that mainly Spirits is going to have to watch out for if he's looking to support the rest of the team. Mind you again, there's no hard breach in the Exit setup right now. So they cannot work their way in through the square wall. They will have to look for another route, whether it's going to be brute forcing it in through the double doors to get into meeting or some other avenue here. Exit will need to find an alternative route and they're running out of time to do it with a little over a minute remaining. Dead silent across the map until Spirits pumps this concussion through the drone hole, but nobody seemingly aware of Catch. anybody's location. Kino, he'll take down Skies as he finally goes for the swing from Janitor, but it's ill-advised. Hot and Gold will traverse down the stairwell and try and see anyone inside of the elevator space, but SSG, what has just happened? Every Exit member is dead! In literally seven seconds, <laughs> everyone dies! SSG on match point. Thank you for production for the wide shot on the team here because it is just great seeing the reactions from SSG right now. Everyone's just laughing at Skies, man. <laughs> Especially oh. Skies. He is not quitting here as once again SSG has moved up onto match point here. Six to three. A fantastic start to this series for Xset as they pick up the first two rounds, drop the third, immediately rebound as the fourth round becomes their own third. But since then, it's been all misses and a lot of misses steps from the Xset roster that have cost them hugely and is very much about to cost them the overall game. Yes, indeed. I mean, that last round especially very unique because you're really never going to have a round where you just simply don't have hard breach in that way. And it was just very, very awkward for them that ended up leading them into quite a few funnels. And it seems like, well, the people at home are thinking that the Gringos are going to get it. And it's looking like you guys just might have been correct on that one by like that little 10% yeah, factor exactly. barely squeaking out. I can see the support is strong for the Xset side though. It's good to see Five that one and we just, just have, we don't have a bunch of like just NA fans just like overloading the SSG vote there. So a, a close fight and indeed I am still curious to see what we will get out of this Xset roster not only for the rest of this matchup but the future as well as they have brought a very fun game to the table even though it's leading us into what's probably going to be a bit of an unfortunate end. I say that a bit earlier of course we still could see exit rebound but the past few rounds have not given at least me a lot of hope for it yeah not very convincing at least inside of these last handful but past that the rounds that exit did get as well as just a few that S uh, excuse me SSG got I mean the clutches that we saw from SSG that's almost a given when it comes to this team you're gonna expect a couple of those to seep through the cracks but uh, for exit I mean all things considered this team is looking a heck of a lot better than the last iteration well, let's see once again here. In fact, Seth's going to be able to still build up a few more rounds before the ultimate end of this one, whether it'll be through overtime where they could still take the victory or if it's going to be SSG coming back. Look at this rotate from SSG, by the way. You guys have probably caught it by now. Of course, Xset trying to throw a curveball at SSG by entering in through the garage, but they just rotated two players down through main stairs. They seem to be hyper aware of this, and that's on top of already catching the first kill against Diaz, once again knocking out the Ying before she can be truly useful. Now Gomez with a great angle here inside of Garage and Toe with Spirits. Get a lot of different oh. things going on here and that's going to be one that they want back. Ramp, he's able to make it through the cross. Oh, taking a lot of damage, yes, but not dead. Way more important to the overall equation. Frag Grenade's in now and not only that, but SSG know that there's Garage presence. For Xset, this has gotten pretty risky. It smokes out, but now it smokes with the defense as well. Spirits is taking so much damage. He'll try and transition into the bottom of main stairs as SSG attempt to hold on. This is going to get scrappy from this point forward here as Xset try to force their way through. They don't have the proper clears in order to negotiate this, so it's going to be all fragging capability that gets them the win if they're going to stay in the fight here now. One to one now, two to one in the favor of SSG here with Fultz and Hotton striking true for the defensive side of things. Spirits and Kino are the last two proponents of Xset remaining, trying to clutch this out and keep the team in the fight to win this matchup. Spirits with a good find as he's up to two for the overall round. But now we need to see Kino come alive also here with three players of SSG still standing tall and only 40 seconds left to play. Exit 
have taken a step back oh. momentarily, but it's not going to be a quiet one. Kano knocks out Bosco. They're not done just yet. That last adrenal surge will be used to boost up these players. Fultz will be forced further back towards the locker's door due to the loss of his deployable shield. Exit, though. Losing a little bit of that confidence now, proceeding very, very slowly. This is where this could get dangerous here. You see the yellow pinks coming out. Fultz is aware of the position of Kino, and he'll drop him along with the case. Just spirits left now in the 1v2. It would end up being a 4K from him if he can clutch this out, but only 10 seconds remaining. He's walking into the crossfire, and Fultz, one pump from the shotgun, will shut it down as SSG control their first game of the NAL season. And what a bounce back from those first handful of rounds from SSG. They figured out the X set puzzle and they went all the way home with it. So they'll take their first match here in stage one of 2022. Solid stuff from SSG. And again, let's talk about exactly what XSET said was going to come into this matchup. They said they were going to have an advantage against some of these higher echelon teams because of the fact there wasn't a lot of tape on them. The teams didn't really know what to expect because, of course, this is a brand new roster. I would say that that became an advantage for the first three rounds, but after that, SSG had caught on. They knew exactly what to do from that point forward and were excellent at shutting down the more aggressive attempts at trying to shake things up from Xset from that point forward. Yeah, I I'm not trying to say anything out of pocket, but Xset, if you thought that you were going to throw something at SSG they've never seen before, I don't think you know who these people are. <laughs> uh, they just came off of an international competition as well. Very so true. I hate to say this, you're not that special. <laughs> like, I I'm just going to, I'm just putting that one out there. But I will say, they did look very good. I am convinced that this roster can definitely do something in the future, but it's going to take some time. Just need to kind of stabilize things a little bit as well. There was two, at least two rounds that we saw that ended up being clutched out by SSG that could have been very easily won by the members of Xset had we not seen some very, very small mistakes being made inside of the moment-to-moment -moment action there. That's stuff that is very easily fixable. More importantly, you know, or rather, it's fixable with time more than anything there, but as well, practice and one of the team will become more cohesive. They'll be better at working around each other, and you'll start to see, I think, less and less of these mistakes and less and less of those clutches coming out from SSG as hopefully this team gets stronger with the season proceeding forward. Yeah, absolutely. It's just one of those time-based things. There's no magic fix for a team, especially in a game that is as complex as Rainbow Six. A lot of these things aren't just in the comms, it's just how you play along with each other and how you enact upon things together as a unit with like those little moment-to-moment -moment things like John's talking about. It's not those little things where you're exactly able yep. to comm it. You just have to know and execute in a proper way. So some of those things are really, really difficult for teams when they first come together. But for Xset, they did a lot of positive things. I think there's a lot for the dust to talk about when it comes to this team. All right, we're going to not waste too much time on that, folks. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. When we do come back, we'll have the desk. And on top of that, we'll have an interview ready and waiting with Hot and Cold from SSG.
Welcome back, everybody, one more time to the NAL. We just saw SSG take it to Exet, and guess what? We've got Hot and Cold on the line with us right now to talk a little bit about how that went for him. Hot and Cold, can you hear me? Are you out there? Yes, I can hear you. Can All hear right. Me? Hey, congratulations on uh, winning the round. Now, what I wanted to kind of talk about was Space Station Gaming ended up starting a lot of those rounds one man down. Uh, Exet was kind of successful on the entry from time to time pretty often here. So I was curious. What does it take to kind of come back as far as mental fortitude, as far as shot calling goes, to win a round when you're down one person? Um, it's definitely gotten a lot harder. Uh, I mean, that's that's honestly the meta right now on defense is to play super aggressive and try and look for the early picks because a lot of times with the attacker repick, it's hard to get the attacks off, you know, if they have all that time and they have all the right ops to hit the site. So, um, I mean, I think SSG as a whole even before I got here, it has always been known as like a mental fortitude team. You know, there we have like some of the most clutch players in the game, in my opinion. So mm. I, I think it just kind of comes naturally at this point. OK, well, being clutch comes naturally. That sounds like a pretty good thing for a team. <laughs> Yeah, especially for these guys and especially yeah. for one player in particular. I did want to touch on Bosco briefly. How's that IGL switch working out? Like for the most part, I, I, I like the idea of moving him back into a position where he's able to switch completely with Skies. But from your perspective, tell me how that's going. Uh, well, Bosco was actually wanted, he wanted to switch to IGL way back uh, since I joined the team. You know, the plan was to have him has hard breach instead of thinking nade, but thinking nade didn't really want to play flank watch anymore. So that whole thing happened. And then ever since then, he's just trying to been itched to play the hard breach IGL role. And so far, so good, in my opinion. He's definitely got a lot to learn, but he knows that and he puts in the work. So I'm, I'm excited for it. Okay. And well, you talked earlier about how, like, on defense, it's like X set was really, like, they were throwing impacts at you and just kind of pressing you before you could even get into the building <laughs> some rounds. One of them you actually clawed back. So I'm wondering, did you guys feel like, you know, you just kind of had to survive that defensive, uh, nightmare that exit was giving you and then you know going into attack you'd probably have the advantage because of the fact that exit doesn't really have like an igl that can really you know manifest attacks for them is that something that went in you guys' game plan or something you thought about uh i wouldn't really say we went in with the intention to survive obviously you know <laughs> we we definitely should have done better on attack i think we started off really slow um i think some you know game day little little shakes happened um but we bounced back from that super, super well. And like you said, Xset, as far as I know, don't really have an attack IGL. So defense felt like, you know, very, very easy against them. They just they just try to like pull out a lot of different crazy ops. Sure enough. All right. Well, one more question before we let you go here. So every team has like a goal, has something they want to achieve in the season. Obviously, you guys do, too. I'm curious, what's the goal for the season? And then where do you kind of put yourself right now as we come into stage one as far as getting to that goal? Uh, I mean, obviously, we want to win as, as many games as possible, but I think realistically, our goal is to, you know, get Bosco up to uh, where he needs to be at in IGLing, get him where he feels comfortable in himself, and be ready for the LAN stages. I think, or not the LAN stage, but the LAN tournament. I think if we put more of our focus into that, it, it'll go better. All right, hot and cold. Thank you very much. Congrats on the win. Good luck with the practice, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Have a good one, guys. All right, ladies oh. and gentlemen, there you go. My fellow uh, desk analysts, or I'm not the analyst, you're the analyst. My desk analyst. You've been an analyst before, though, right? I, I have been an analyst in other games. I, that's right. I, I was one over the weekend for a different game, in fact. But, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But here I am the host. Here you are the analyst. But let's break down that series a little bit more. We're going to look at the stats in a moment. But just kind of first initial thoughts as far as that one goes. Because I, I think although Space Station Gaming certainly to me seemed like the dominating team in that particular map, uh, there was a lot of kind of like spark of brilliance from Exit here and there. There were certainly some good things on the individual level, I felt like. Did you notice that too? Yeah, I think mostly on defense because that's where sure. they got any of their round wins. And even in Very spite true. of not winning anything on attack, they still had opening kill. That was Kino on the hot and yeah. in fact, a couple of times consecutively. Not something that you're necessarily used to seeing, but that you want to see if you're Space Station because that's a disadvantage you have to claw yourself back out of. So that's nice for Exit. I think early and mid game, probably where they like where they're being able to flourish or be themselves, if that means being more aggressive or kind of out of the loop with how North, normal North American teams opt to structure themselves, then sure. But late game, executes, IGL work, strategy, once we get down to the later part of a round, that's where it's a much bigger question mark. And we saw that be a problem because how many attacks did they win? This many. 
which is a big problem a and lot. is very representative of what their IGL situation is right now. Yeah, I think you can credit that. Also, Intel for SSG, you noticed yeah. there were a lot of, uh, especially in that 2v2 in that last round, there's a whole lot of opinion going on. Yeah. Where, I mean, it just seemed like SSG had a read on whatever exit was trying to flood and do, kind of trying to throw stuff at a wall and see if it worked. And it's yeah. not going to work like that when you got a camera looking you right in your eye socket and following everything you do. So it's pretty difficult. Exit's going to have to find ways to pull rounds out and deal with that. It's from other teams, you know, it's something Sonic's actually struggled with earlier today, Intel, sure. maybe causing exactly, them. Yeah. You know other teams are going to make sure that they're kind of having a read on what Exet's trying to do so they're not just caught off guard by this random crouch walk from here or random <laughs> guy hopping in there. SSG didn't fall for that. For sure. You got to have some powerful thighs to crouch walk that successfully. You know, that, you ever try to do that? Like crouch walk? It's really hard. I don't know how video yeah, game characters do the it all the time. Make it look so natural, but That's it's like so yeah, hard. Exactly. Like everyone, every character in every game can do it like without breaking a sweat. You try doing that in real life. I mean, you're going to be on the ground and it's like, a workout. it's There's tough. There's a reason I yeah. let professionals do that job and not me. <laughs> That's right. We don't, we don't actually get into the game. Some people in like Tron or something like that. But the reason I haven't even tried airsoft or paintball, like oh. my knees would just be ravaged if I tried to. All right, that. we we got to change that. We got to change that. But uh, for good. now, for now though, we'll, we'll get to, we'll look at those stats later maybe. But for now, we're gonna take a look at one of the rounds that stood out from that series. It was round number seven. This had probably I I would say kind of the the craziest conclusion to a round we've seen today, and something we don't see too often, which is a team yeah, losing yeah. post plant on attack. That's a bit of a rarity, isn't it? Yeah, it's a problem. I think Rampy's roam up here was actually very well. All time. This is obviously SG's first defense. Kills Gomez right off top. He should theoretically have that second kill too. Yaga has the equalizer, and Xset still has favorable man count because Hot and Cold was already dead off of, I believe, it was one of Kino's entries to start things off. So Xset again showing why they're already very good in early to late round. But then when the execute goes down, Diaz's one shield comes in. That does get planted. The Yokai itself is late. But equalizer after equalizer from SSG means they could continue to push back into server presence. And then this team kill, they take advantage of the fact that Kino somehow just executes Diaz for reasons we still don't <laughs> completely comprehend. If there's a different angle, we'll look at it. Bosco has to completely reassemble his own position. They start to push in. This looks like Exit has a chance at holding on to it, but Skies is going to tuck himself into this corner. He's going to long arm it and then not come off. And he'll come off once, but the other engagement across the map means it's enough of a distraction. Kino has to come back in. There's a dirt drop. There's one pushing again. Kino can't move back in fast enough wow. because of that action happening in server right in front of him and he just doesn't shoot a little bit lower if he's a couple pixels south he probably has that but he just can't see all he hears is the cue knowing that that's getting counter diffused and you know he's also hearing his teammates he's hitting he's hitting he's hitting mind, <laughs> he's sticking it get in there probably something like that and he had that vertical grip it's the little things it's so i mean it's funny to us because we're just like are we, are we really saying it's even was it's one or for us to watch right? yeah but it's like it's such minor things that cost you around yeah. yeah yeah i mean like if he had angle grip maybe he swings on the corner boom Maybe, and then maybe sprinting is, is more justified there, but that's it, the, I mean, the minutia is so weird to dive into. Yeah, I mean, and that's the beauty of any game at a professional level, right? Is that it's those tiny, tiny things because all the fundamentals are so nailed down. It's, it's fun 